my question with the Broncos, so you were mentioning that you had your skepticism of Nathaniel Hackett. Also on the defensive side, losing Vic Fangio. Uh, is there What coach would you have pursued instead? Would you have kept Fangio, or would you have pursued somebody else in the offseason? And uh, Russell Wilson, do you think it was a lot to give up for him? Well, I think the Wilson thing's fine. I mean, that's the market value for a great quarterback. Denver has not really been good at picking quarterbacks, and they haven't really, to their... I think um, detriment, they haven't given it a real shot. You know, they haven't drafted a quarterback in the first round in forever. Uh, Paxton Lynch, I think 2016, (laughs) but even then he was back half of the first round, which is, you know, uh, uh, you know, spec, you know, it wasn't a great draft pick in my opinion. Um, But, you know, to get a quarterback who you think is going to be really good, you have to give up that much. So I think that he did. I think Hackett's fine. I just think that expectations have to be tempered. You know, I think they, they have like a, 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 design coach now which is basically teaching coaches how to coach which I think is like kind of a cool little edge that they might be able to carve out there defense has great talent and they get Randy Gregory from Dallas which I think is a good uh, acquisition and at the wide receiver position I know Patrick's injured but Judy has been fantastic Sutton's a good player uh, and then at tight end Albert O I think is going to be a breakout candidate this year Javante Williams I've already bet him over 900 rushing yards this year I just think that that's a lock um, I think they'll be good I just think for the Broncos to win 12, 13 games, you know, Russ is going to have to be the MVP of the league. And I don't know if he can be the MVP of the league right away. NFC East, everybody is looking at it and, and they're, they're trying to, trying to figure out where some of these teams are going to fall. The Cowboys, which they were the number one uh, team in the AFC, uh, in the NFC last year, the number the NFC East last year. And then, some of the acquisitions that Philadelphia made in the offseason, the draft, and then adding A.J. Brown, and, and Jordan Davis looks like a beast of a man. He looks crazy. And then uh, you look at everybody else, the Washington Commanders, and then the New York Giants. Where does this NFC East fall in your eyes? It's, it's an interesting question. I think Washington could be a team that is spunky. They were pretty good last year. If after you adjust for schedule and after you adjust for injuries and COVID and all that. So, but, and and I thought Scott Turner did a great job of calling plays for them. I just think Antonio Gibson, which we're finding out is pretty real. Antonio Gibson was terrible last year. Mm -hmm. Um, He was one of the least efficient runners when the team blocked up plays. Uh, And Taylor Heineke was terrible. If you took Taylor Heineke without play action, he averaged like five yards of pass attempts. So, you know, you bring Wentz in, you bring uh, Brian Robinson Jr. in, I think you give you give the offense a chance. I don't think Wentz will be great, but I think he just has to be maybe league average for that team to be good. And, and then defensively, I know Chase Young, losing him to the first four weeks is a blow, but they have a lot of good players on that defense. They have an easy schedule, the fourth easiest in the NFL. Um, them or the Giants, I think, will actually be contenders in this division. Wow. I just don't know which one. Um, Philly, everybody's hot on Philly. I get it. I think Jalen. it'll go as far as Jalen Hurts takes them, which is – I think kind of frustrating when you build a team that way because you build everything but Jalen Hurts and then you have to depend upon Jalen Hurts. And and that's tough. Dallas is probably a 50-50 proposition to be a 12-win team or a complete bust, uh, as they are every single year. A couple injuries here and there, and they can they can bust out the way they did in 2020, or they can be pretty good like they were in 2021. I'm just I'm just waiting for the 17 game finish of eight eight and one. Why does everybody hate the Cowboys? I mean, everybody, every expert that we have spoken to uh, since you, I I mean, we've talked, we we speak, we spoke until at least five or six, you know, I guess, experts. And everybody says that the Cowboys are going to be horrible this year. I don't understand it. Uh, like, like, what did well, they lose? Uh, to be fair, I said they have a 50% chance to win 12 games. Okay. Okay. Right. Like, I, I, I just think when you look at that team, the floor is low, right? We saw the floor in 2020 when they really couldn't win a game. Like, they, they, the quarterback obviously got hurt. But even before Dak got hurt, they were putting up 600 yards in a game of two and three. Right. Last year, they got really good luck with – Randy Gregory, uh, Micah Parsons, J. Ron Curse, and then I think chiefly it was, you know, Trayvon Diggs, uh, who got all the interceptions but gave up a thousand yards in coverage. <laughs> so you you decrease Trayvon Diggs from eleven interceptions to four, let's say, right. right? You you Parsons, you know, maybe maybe Parsons they they try to play him more as a traditional linebacker and less of a Lawrence Taylor type player. You know, J. Ron Curse already got buckled up in a in a training camp. You know, you, there there are weak links to the Cowboys where if they all are strong, they're great. Mm -hmm. If they're not, we've seen 2020 with Dallas. We've seen, I mean, that team led the league in yards per play in 2019 and went eight and eight. Like this team's capable of some stuff, right? Like 
and 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 they've been that way forever. They but, have wide receiver problems, yeah. so that's going to be a they have wide receiver problem. I, I think CD Lamb. If you're going to make a bet, a yeah. long shot bet, CD Lamb to lead the league in receiving is a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's a great player. Um, but but beyond him, I mean, it's Dalton Schultz, a tight end who's playing on the franchise tag, and um, after that, I mean, they could really use somebody like Will Fuller, uh, to be honest with you. Michael Gallup coming back. There's a number of ways they can go. Cowboys fans always thinking their players are always the best. Me, I had somebody hear of them. Trayvon Diggs, a top five quarter in the NFL, just based on his first half of all those interceptions. Yeah, okay. So from a, from the NFC East to the West, the Super Bowl champion L.A. Rams, a team that did not. They were, lost Von Miller, but they gained a lot more in the offseason. Didn't lose as much as a lot of people expect for any Super Bowl championship type team. What do you think is the chances of them repeating? And also with Matthew Stafford's arm, and there were some concerns with that going into the season. What have you heard about that? It's all about Stafford's arm for me. The NFC is so much weaker than it was a season ago. Um, and and so I think, you know, even though they lose Miller, um, you know, they lose Odell. They do get Allen Robinson. Um, back, which is helpful. They lose Andrew Whitworth, but Joseph Noboom has always been good in his stead. So I think they'll be fine. If Stafford's arm blows up, though, and and we've seen it, Stafford's missed a lot of time in his career, and he's also played injured and poorly a lot of time in his career, including at times last year, even in a Super Bowl year. Uh, that that could be the that to me that's the only dagger to them. I think everything else, if Stafford plays moderately healthy all year, I think that they are a top three seed in the NFC. We are talking to Pro Football Focus Research and Development Manager Eric Eager. Last question for me, Eric, because I know you have a show coming up. You look at Tampa, and, and, and Tampa, they have as good a team as they did last year. I, I think they're even more stacked. I think offensively, they did lose their center for a significant amount of time. I think Jensen will be, be back sometime this year. But nevertheless, this team is stacked. Tom Brady came back. I've, I've been hearing a lot of good things since he's been back uh, – over the last 24 hours. What are your thoughts to Tampa? Do you think that this team could be a Super Bowl contender this year? Certainly. I think the loss on the interior of the offensive line is rough. They did get Shaq Mason from New England. Losing Ryan Jensen for that long is tough. Aaron Stinney as well is a bad loss. Uh, God, you know, Godwin, Evans have been banged up. You get bring in Julio. Who knows how long he'll play? I think the defense will be very solid. Uh, they, did, they did let Sue go. Um but Sue was kind of a replacement level player last year, so that that's probably fine. The secondary is good. Todd Bowles, I think, is an upgrade over Bruce Arians at this point really? in their career. Wow. Coach. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I think they're a top three seed in the NFC. I think any reasonable person, you look at the NFC, it's the Rams, it's the Bucks, it's the Packers. Um, any one of those teams can fall off. I don't think they're as strong as the Bills and the Chiefs and the, you know, some of the top teams in the AFC, but um, I think those are the top three teams in the NFC. Uh, and they all have warts, but I think they're all solid, and, and it starts for all three of them at the head coach and quarterback position. Hmm. So my last question, one team that you think will overperform and be a surprise, and one team that you think will underperform this year? Uh, yeah, if, if anybody's following my Twitter, it's something of a, of a gag at this point, but I do, I do actually think they'll be better than expectation, and that's the, the Detroit Lions. Um, I think Goff, you know, once they got rid of Anthony Lynn, Goff was a pretty good quarterback last year. Defense has two first-round picks at defensive end. Offense is littered with first-round picks, and you get Jamison Williams back in week five. I think they'll be better. And they have the second easiest, uh, second or third easiest schedule in the NFL. So they're, it's it's mapped out there for them pretty well. I think a team that's going to underachieve, unfortunately, for, uh, you know, everybody down in South Beach, I think the Miami Dolphins are going to underachieve. I just don't see two... Uh, uh, with a head coach that's never called plays at the NFL level and never been a head coach at the NFL level, trying to do both in the same year with a quarterback who's not very good, I think that that's going to be tougher. And they're talented, but I think it's going to be tougher for them than people believe. Are you sure you weren't on Tyreek Hill's podcast? <laughs> <laughs> because Tyreek says he's the most accurate quarterback he's ever seen. <laughs> Tyreek... Yeah. I don't know Poor what he's Tyreek. drinking. He might be smoking something, but uh, it must be really good ganja over there because uh, if he's not doing that, he might be on something. But uh, Maybe he I should am... tell his owner so he doesn't have to tamper for Tom Brady anymore. Oh, God, <laughs> please. Oh, my God. But anyways, uh, tell the fans how they can find you on social media, bud. Yeah, I'm at PFF underscore Eric on all, you know, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and obviously Twitter. Um, I have a podcast called the PFF Forecast, which is every Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, which is on PFF YouTube and all that. And then I also have a podcast 
uh, about the Kansas City Chiefs called Red, Gold, and Bold. Uh, that is on you know anywhere you can find your podcast. So uh, thanks for having me on, guys. This is fun. Absolutely. So you're a Broncos fan doing a podcast of the Chiefs. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm not a Broncos fan. I'm a Chiefs fan. Oh, you're a Chiefs fan. I, I did, okay. I, but I, I, I follow the Broncos, obviously, because, you know, it's my job. Yeah, it's oh, his okay. job, man. Gotcha. What, are you, what are you trying to say to him, man? He's a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He should be. I mean, you have one of the great young quarterbacks in the NFL. You have uh, arguably the best offensive mind the NFL's ever seen. I mean, why not? Be a Chief fan. Maybe, Speedy, you become a Chief fan. Uh, you will. You like wearing red. The anti-chargers. You like wearing red. I do not like wearing red. It's the only red shirt I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You wear it every single week. No, I don't. <laughs> that is not true at all. I didn't even know it was mine. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't even know it was his. Anyways, thank you, Eric. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.